made in 1677 by Niccolo Amari, who lived from 1596 to 1684, the fifth son of Girolamo Amari, the grandson of Andre Amari. The 1630s Italian plague that killed his father and main rival left him as a central maker in the Cremonese tradition. Niccolo brought on apprentices from outside his family to deal with the influx of work in the 1640s. This was not common as the tradition was primarily passed from father to son. Andre Guneri was an apprentice in this shop, and while there is no evidence of Stradivarius's apprenticeship, he was certainly influenced by the instruments being made there. In 1666, Stradivarius labeled an instrument Aluminus Nicolas Amati, or the student of Niccolo Amati. Niccolo is credited with developing the grand pattern. This pattern uses a smaller proportional arc for the C bouts that is two thirds of the lower bout. This brings the upper and lower bouts closer together and makes the instrument more wide and stout. However, the proportionality of the Romanov viola follows the pattern developed by his grandfather, where the C bouts and upper bouts are four fifths of the lower bout dimension. This leads me to believe that this instrument was built on one of his father's forms, and that seems to make sense, as his father is the probable designer of the contra alto sized viola that is still popular today. The maker was 81 years old when this instrument was made. It's interesting that he would choose to make an instrument on this pattern at this time. Perhaps it was made in a nostalgic way, thinking back to the time he spent working with his father. It is also thought that Niccolo's son may have had a hand in the construction of this instrument, and perhaps he was teaching his son the same way he was taught by his father. There's a very interesting story here about the form of the violin family instruments. The proportionality of these instruments cannot be by mistake. It comes as no surprise to me that the design work accredited to Andre Amati would also be passed down to his sons, and in turn, Niccolo would teach these techniques to his apprentices. We know them as luthiers, but to me, their greatest gift may have been design. It just makes too much sense to disregard. And while there's no evidence that this is how they design these beautiful forms, it's rational to think so. It all just flows too easily not to have been intentional. First, Andre develops the well-known violin shape and the proportionality is four fifths. He teaches a system to his sons and in turn grandson. And then Niccolo develops a new proportionality of the grand pattern drawing inspiration from his grandfather and changing the seabow proportion to two thirds. Then Niccolo teaches this system to Guineri, who makes his own adaptation while keeping the proportions the same as Amadi, he changes the width between the seabouts to two thirds of the upper bout instead of half of the lower bout. Then on to Stradivarius. While I have not read anything that leads me to think that Stradivarius worked in the Amati shop, I think the label Aluminus Nicolas Amati means that he was studying these instruments, and I think the Stradivarius superimposed seabout, his adaptation of the seabout proportion, was possibly by mistake, a wonderful mistake, but just that, a design misinterpretation. If it was intentional, then he was not only an amazing luthier, but also an incredible student of design. While the Stradivarius and Guineri violin forms are more popular today. The Amati viola forms remain very popular. It has even been said that there is a freedom to transform these proportions. This instrument has a fantastic journey and traveled far from its Cremonese home. The journey of this design is just as interesting as the people and places it has lived. 
The instrument was probably made for the aristocratic Leone family of Venice and brought by cellist Francisco Candi to St. Petersburg, where he was performing in an opera orchestra, and subsequently sold to the Princess Romanov and became part of the imperial collection. After the Russian Revolution, it was brought to New York, where it was sold to Curtis Bach and held at the Curtis Institute of Music until 1944. Today, it is held in a private collection. Venice to St. Petersburg and New York, from father to son, to grandson, to Guarneri and Stradivarius, through various proportional design techniques and back again. The rich history of the Romanov Amadi viola shows how much these works of art and instruments of artists mean to us. I've heard it said that it does not matter what they look like, only the tone is important. This is just not true. They are works of art and tools for artists. They are what all art aspires to be, the supreme embodiment of form and function, and I, for one, would not have it any other way. 